What does an American like me do in Barbados on the 4th of July? The only fitting answer is to visit the George Washington House, the location where America's first president stayed for six weeks in 1751 as a 19-year-old, long before he became the first president. He traveled there to visit his half-brother, Lawrence, who was suffering from tuberculosis. This was the only time in his life when he traveled outside of mainland North America. Up to this point in his life, he had never gone farther than 200 miles away from his birthplace. The house wasn't owned by the Washington family, but rather by a Captain Crofton who rented it to them. The monthly rate to rent the house, 75 US dollars. What I found interesting in this story is that while he was there, he contracted smallpox, one of the most deadly and feared diseases in the New World at the time. He recovered, of course, but it's thought-provoking to imagine how the world might be different if he had died from it. It's also worth imagining what might have happened if he didn't travel to Barbados, get smallpox, recover, and therefore gain a lifetime immunity from it. He may well have died from it later on during the Revolutionary War, when the disease swept through his army repeatedly. It's amazing to think how one person's small six-week trip to Barbados contributed so meaningfully to the eventual existence of the United States. As an American, I initially thought it was a bit weird that a country would preserve and promote a house that a foreign country's historical leader stayed at for only six weeks. But then I considered, what if it had been another country's leader? A Napoleon or Catherine the Great of Russia, perhaps? I would be just as interested to learn about their stay here. So I appreciate the work that's been done here to preserve this historical moment. Part of the self-guided tour of this property includes several stops where you can listen to audio presentations on different aspects of the house and its history. The audio guides were well done, so I'm going to share a small sample of one of them as I show you more video of the property. Washington was able to quantify the value of exports from Barbados back to Britain. He then extrapolated those figures to other British assets within the West Indies and came to realize the British were making a lot more money down here than they were in the entire North American territories. It was not like making 50% more, but more like making 500% more. The super high profit sugar industry built on the backs of the slavery system made the West Indies the British cash cow. He understood this because he had seen it for himself. So leaving Barbados behind, we now go forward to the start of the American Revolution in 1775, by which time George Washington had become the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. Just over a year later, in 1776, they declared independence. George Washington knew at this point they could not win this war against the British. They were too strong and, of course, had been inoculating their troops against smallpox for years. He knew they had to find some way to divide or distract the British if they were to be successful. In 1778, George Washington came up with the answer by allying with the French. The French were the last in a series of countries like the Dutch, Portuguese and Spanish who wanted the sugar assets in the West Indies and this time they were bringing the Spanish back with them. The British government reacted to this news by sending 75% of their forces down to the West Indies to defend the sugar assets. George Washington knew this was inevitable and that he stood a far better chance against the remaining 25% left to deal with the American problem. By 1782, the war was all but over. He had been proved correct, and seven years later, he would become the first president of the United States. George Washington had a series of experiences in Barbados that were to prove very important in his later life. These experiences were not the only or even the main reason for the success of the American Revolution, which, evoked by excessive taxation, simply awoke an unstoppable underlying movement that had been in process for decades. This was the movement towards non-hereditary rights and the inalienable rights exposed during the revolution. What we can say is that George Washington's visit to Barbados would be a very small link in a very long chain of events. Also on the property, or rather underneath the property, are the garrison tunnels, 
which are such a fascinating story that they deserve a video of their own. So look for one on my YouTube channel the next week or two on it. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.